in this episode I'll be concentrating on a rabbit dish now we all know where they come from we have to go out there, we have to shoot them that's where his wild games come from and this is the particular rabbit I'll be using in this dish first things first it's been growing season I've been growing some vegetables in my garden so here I am taking some red potatoes out uh, later followed on with taking some whites out as well Luckily I've managed to get these out and then I've uh, planted another another crop that should be ready in October time. So fingers crossed I'll get some more to harvest as well. Yeah I'm just scraping soil away and every now and again a few red potatoes drop through onto a uh, plastic sheet and they're using to catch them to catch soil. Now it's time for a few carrots. As usual, I've got my uh, little sidekick with me, my daughter. I'm pulling a few of these carrots. A few were a little bit too small that I pulled, but you're not to know until you start pulling them. So I left some of these in and I planted another crop of carrots as well. My daughter uh, helps me out there and pulls a couple out. It's a satisfying feeling. Growing and harvesting your own veg. I don't think there's a better way to use it than to... Uh, have an accompaniment of uh, wild meat. So here's some harvest, some pod peas, some carrots, red potatoes, and some white potatoes in that pot as well. All looking fantastic, full of colour, freshness, and very tasty. So first things first, uh, I got myself rabbit out of the freezer. In this case, uh, deboning legs. And cutting the saddle into uh, nice chunky pieces, ready for going into a pie. Just cut them into pieces, pop them into that white bowl, and then I'll come back to them later when I'm uh, ready for them. As you can see, that's nice, fresh, vibrant coloured meat. And I say it many times, you can't beat wild meat for the table. So now we're on to vegetables. Start off with carrots, just top and tail them as you do. I decided to leave them all because they, they were only small. There were some of the smaller ones, like I said, they should have been left a little bit longer really, but I do get to some bigger ones as they start getting through pot. And now we're on to potatoes. So I'll just cut these in half or in quarters if they're that sort of size. Any smaller ones I come across, I'll just leave them all. Great to get this harvest out of garden. Really, really pleased with it. I'm putting it to good use. Here's one at White's. I think that's the first time we've seen one. There'll be quite a few more in there as well. Chuck all them in bowl. Give them a good rinse round, they've still got soil on them. Uh, I'm not going to peel them. All your flavour, all your goodness is all in skins. So I tend to just wash my vegetables, give them a good wash, and use them as they are. Cheating, a few mushrooms here. Obviously, I ain't growing these myself. And a few extra carrots just to add to the filling. Obviously I didn't get that many off my first crop and they weren't that big so I did use a couple that I bought.
I've got myself a couple of onions. I have got some onions growing in the garden, but they're not ready yet. They need probably another month or so. They are getting bigger. They are swelling up. But like I say, they're not ready. When they are ready, I will harvest them. I'll use them in a dish similar to this. Here's some pod peas out of the garden. Unfortunately, pod peas are coming to an end now. I've got a couple of plants that are still flowering, so I might get a few more, but I don't tend to get to them that fast because my kids love them. They love to just go out in the garden, pick them off, pod them, and uh, they can devour quite a few of these. So there you go, that's them all podded. Now that vegetables have had a wash, it's a case of putting them into the slow cooker. And just start filling the slow cooker up. What plan is with slow cooker is to cook it on a medium heat, sorry, and just leave it for as long as I can, really. I think I put this in about 9 o'clock one night. Uh, I left it all night. And I come home from work following day. And I finished process off about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock that evening. I'm just flaking onions up here, chucking them in. I'm doing it slowly, I'm sort of building it up. I'm putting some meat in. I put a little bit of meat in, then I, I move vegetables about. Just get a good mix, get all ingredients mixed together well. So meat's going in, I'm layering it like I say, and getting it mixed around with my hands. So I just evenly spread it out a little bit really. have to be careful, I do get in trouble if I start chucking food all over the place. And dogs are hovering around my feet, so any scraps that do hit floor, I usually go in about 3 seconds flat. Always season your dish as well. I like to use sea salt, ground black pepper. Also be putting some uh, chicken stock cubes in and uh, some chicken gravy granules. Fill it up with uh, boiling water. I'll go just at the top of meat and vegetables. That way they're all submerged in some moisture. And they all get to steam and cook properly uh, throughout the cooking process. And finally, it's time for chicken hock sauce. I'll just put a couple of these in. Just adds a bit more flavour. Uh, chicken hock sauce I find goes better with rabbit. Obviously, rabbit meat's got a similar texture to what chicken would have. And it cooks in way as well, so uh, I do find it goes well together. I 
That salt pie filling, it's slow cooker, all mixed together, seasoned well. Oxo cubes, gravy granules, on a medium heat. And leave that for as long as you can, really. So to accompany this pie, I've got this mint growing wild in my garden. So I'm going to line it on grown vegetables. I'll pick some of these and I'm going to make my own mint sauce. So here I'm back in the kitchen. And it's time to start mixing pastry up. That's a bit of a cheat. Uh, I don't profess to be a cook or a baker, so it's a ready mix packet. All you've got to do is slowly add certain amounts of water. And just mix it together slowly until you get the right consistency. I've shortened this process, I'm not going to show it you all. It's, uh, it does take about 10 15 minutes to mix it properly and knead it and get it to the point that you want it at. Like I say, it's just slowly, slowly. Take your time, there's no rush. Get some air into that into that pastry when you're kneading dough, and it'll uh, it'll fluff out and uh, taste nice and white. So we're at that point now, well, near enough at the point where it's ready to go on to chopping board. I'll be using that to uh, help me knead it and shape it into how I want it to be. You can see, still needs a little bit of water. If I remember right, I did add a little bit more water. Just splashed a bit of water on my hands and just used, used my hands to knead it in. It's usually a good gauge how to get consistency right. There you go, it's just going together now. At this point, it still needs a little bit of water. You can see how dry it is on edges. It's nearly there. It takes about 95% where you want it to be. So as I mentioned before, I'll wet my hands. And then I'll just knead it with what moisture is on my hands and it'll just form into the right consistency. That's looking more like it. You can see how it's got that moisture in it now, a bit like Play-Doh. Bit of flour, just on chopping board, and we're going to be ready for rolling this out any second. So again, it's just a case of taking your time. Turn pastry around, get a little roll. Chopping board's a bit small for rolling this out to the size I want it, so eventually, once it gets to a certain length, I'll take it off chopping board, add a bit of flour to kitchen unit side, worked up, and then uh, I roll it out to roughly the size that I need it. So we've got a nice big dish, oven proof dish. I'm going to slowly start laying it base of that. Rolling ingredients have been in slow cooker. Like I mentioned before, it's been there quite a long time. It's well cooked, but it's also still quite firm. All well, the vegetables are not the meat, the meat's nice and tender. And that's because it's still got to go through another cooking process for about half an hour, 40 minutes, I believe it'll be. So I'll finish cooking process off in the oven. So there's no need to fully cook it in the first instance. Now there's all them lovely juices. 
that meat and vegetables have been cooking in. So what I've done, I'm just going to pour three or four ladles in and that'll just retain some moisture inside pie when it's cooking away in the oven. Pick my pastry up, nice and gentle. You have to be gentle with it at this point because it is quite flimsy and it'll break easy. I'm just trying to work out the best way that it fits. As you can see, I've overlapped it on one side a bit too much, so I'll gently pull it across, slide it across, and uh, even it out a bit better. Although we'll just trim excess off from our edges. If I've got any gaps, I'll just fill them gaps in using what I've uh, I've cut off basically. So here I am, just filling gaps in on edges, just in case we're needing a bit of dough in. Trying to keep that seal as best you can, really. But it's uh, my cookie's only rough cooking. I'm not too fussed about how the end product looks, it's more about how it tastes. I can assure you, this dish did taste lovely. Just finishing touches now, as you can see, that don't look half bad. Just to distinguish it as a, a rabbit pie, I've got a little bit of fun with a bit of pastry that's left. So I rolled that out into a rough, rough sphere. Get myself a sharp knife. I decide to create a little bit of rabbit head. So I cut two ears, and then I cut a little uh, round head out as part of ears. I'll place that on top of pie when I've uh, finished playing. The playtime's over, it's just time to put a few slits into the pie, let it breathe, let some uh, steam out, let some moisture out. One last thing to do regarding pie, and that's just get a bit of a, a brush with some, just some milk really, and that'll help your pie go a nice brown colour, 
can get a bit of cold suit pastry, that's all. You can be quite liberal with milk. Put as much on as you choose to, really. Like I say, it's just, uh, just for aesthetics and to make pie look uh, nice and brown and appetising to eat. So there you go. You can see milk wash on it. Rabbit's head, rabbit's ears. Not a bad Tony Hart impression, that one, if I'm being honest. Oven's on 200 degrees centigrade. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Celsius, whatever it is. I want pint middle of the oven. So heat distributes evenly. And pie cooks thoroughly all the way through. Like I said, filling's already cooked. So it's just about cooking pastry. And just applying finishing touch to uh, the actual filling. So I'll go in the oven now. 30-40 uh, minutes. But just keep an eye on it. And what you're looking for is just that paste just to brown off. And you can take it out of the oven, let it cool down. So here we are, going back to the mint. Once I picked it out of the garden, I put it in a bowl, uh, run it through some cold water a few times, then let it rest in a bottle of cold water. Just to make sure there's no insects on it, and to give it a wash as well. And then what I did, I just spread it out on a couple of pieces of kitchen roll. Let it air dry for a little while before I come back to it. So it's time to take pie out of the oven. Been in there 30-40 minutes. Put it on the kitchen side and just let it naturally cool. What I'll do after 5-10 minutes is I'll just put a piece of tin foil over the top. I'll just let it sit there until it's fully cooled. So all I'm doing now is I've gone back to the mint. I'm going to chop it finely. In all honesty, I could have cut it a bit finer. But this is after work and uh, I haven't really got energy to spend that much time. So chop it as fine as I want it to be really. Again, I'm after flavour, not looks. It's quite a simple process. All you've got to do is pick your mint. Like I say, I'm lucky I've got it growing in my garden. Chop it finely, get it washed, chop it finely. And just add it to a jar. Uh, you can use any vinegar you want. I think this was malt vinegar that I used. But you can use any vinegar. Uh, you can use white vinegar, brown vinegar, apple cider vinegar. That's uh, all down to your taste buds really and what you prefer. I'll probably try it with apple cider vinegar. I've, uh, I've got quite a big jar of that. So it would be interesting to see if there is a difference in taste. I want mints fresh and it's growing in my garden before it dies off for autumn and winter. I'm going to harvest some. I'm going to make probably three or four jars of vinegar so uh, mint sauce. So I'm going to use a few different uh, vinegars and see what I prefer. One thing I didn't show you, add one tablespoon of sugar and a pinch of salt. And a little touch of water as well. So here's the finished pie. I'm really pleased with how that looked. This got shared out between four people at work and they all gave me good feedback and said it was absolutely delicious. And this is mint sauce. Obviously it says that because it clearly says it with a label. That's my missus's input. But this was absolutely beautiful. We put this on pie. Uh, we cooked it up with some new potatoes. Like I said, we shared it between four. And it was great. So I'll definitely be trying this again. Thanks for watching. And I'll, I'll see you for the next installment.